In this video, I want to look at working with track automation. Until now, we've been setting our levels statically by just moving the faders and putting them where we want. But sometimes it's necessary to have the movement of levels of either volume or other parameters change dynamically over time. And to do this, we need to automate their movement. So first thing to do is to get into track automation view. You can get to it several ways. Under the view menu here, we can invoke track automation. And it doesn't look like anything's changed. And that's because you have to be at a fairly wide vertical zoom level in order to view track automation. So let me zoom in. And you'll see now that like flex view, the mode enables on and off when you're zoomed wide vertically. So we can turn it off and you'll see our regular view and track automation. And you can get to it by key command A. That'll toggle it on or off. And as well, if you have your shortcut bar open on top here, you can just click the automation button. Now, it's important to work at a large vertical zoom level in order to get fine resolution. You'll see why as the video progresses. But we've looked at individual track zooming. But just to recap, you may want to resize the track that you're working on either by clicking with the finger tool there and resizing that way or using the key commands Control Option Command with the up and down arrows to get as wide as you can vertically. Now, when you're automating, the first thing you want to do is select which parameter you want to view to automate. It defaults to volume, but you can click hold here in the track header and select between volume, pan, or other parameters that are available on the main slider, such as the solo and mute buttons or the send levels. We can automate all that. And if you select a channel strip that has plugins, they're available also. Let's choose another one like here. If I click hold here, you'll see subcategories for each of the plugins, and you can select whichever parameter you want to automate from whichever plugin. And you can easily view multiple parameters simultaneously by means of this little disclosure triangle here. Click open the triangle, and it'll display another parameter. It defaults to being the same one, but we can switch it. Let's say we want to view the send one level. So now we're viewing the lead vocal channel strip volume and send one, and you can hide it by just closing that. And there are some display preferences that control the way track automation looks. Let's look briefly at that. If we go under display and we'll go to arrange, we'll see that we can control the opacity of how the region data appears in relation to the track automation data. Let me just adjust this and you can see the effect. See it's changing the shading of things. That's for other data, but we're not viewing that right now. But anyway, that's how you can control the view of how the opacity looks. All right, let's look at setting the automation mode. Now, there's a couple of different places to do it. You can do it right in the track header here. There's different modes. There's off, read, touch, latch, and write. You can set the mode there. You can also set it in the channel strip there. It corresponds. And you can also set it in the track mixer. Here's our lead vocal channel over here. And we can set it right here. And they all update to be in sync with each other. And if you hold down the Option key, you'll set it to All. So if I hold Option down and set this to Read, every track is now going to be set to Read. Let's look at what the different modes do. When you're in Off mode, if track automation exists, it'll be ignored. When you play back, it will not be followed. When you're in Read mode, it will play back and respond to the track automation that exists, but you cannot create any track automation. When you're in Touch mode, you can create track automation by mousing the fader or the fader on your control surface. And when you release the mouse, the value will revert back to the state that it was at before you started automating. And latch mode works similarly, but when you release the mouse, the fader will stay at the level that you leave it at. And finally, there's write mode. I'd suggest you stay away from that. It's a destructive mode. It'll erase all the automation that's on your track. So better to use latch or touch and delete what you want to delete manually. All right, there's three different ways of writing automation. Let's start from here once we're here. All I need to do is put logic in play mode. I'm just going to cycle a section here with our vocal in it and twiddle some faders. Hoping that my message has come through. Let me make it clear. And all we need to do now is play it back. Hoping that my message has come through. And now the reverb. And that's how you write track automation by mousing the faders and knobs. Let's hide this for a moment. We'll see our track automation here. We're looking at the send data. And if I click the disclosure triangle, we'll view the volume data there. It's different colors for different automation. And we see the outline here in the background of the volume automation. So you can see if more automation exists if you're only viewing one lane. And you can easily hide or reveal all the different lanes of track automation data by option clicking the triangle. Right now, there's only two, but if there were, let's say, four or five or whatever, you can option click and it'll hide or reveal all of them at once. 
Now the other way, I'm going to undo this, let me go Command Z, Command Z, is to simply drag this meter display up or down while in latch or touch mode. So you can write track automation like that. See it moving. And let me go Command Z again, Command Z. The other way is with the mouse. You can use either the pencil tool or the pointer tool and just click nodes where you want like that. So that's send level and this is volume level. And logic will follow that. that See it here. Let me make it clear. So different ways of writing track automation. Let's look at selecting the nodes now for editing. You can shift click and select nodes by dragging the lasso around like that. I can do the same thing here. I'm selecting all of them like that, or I can select just one node. You don't really see a big selection because there's only one, but let's say I'll select two. You can do it like that. And you can also click outside the track lane to deselect automation. So just click in the background. There we go, selection. Now it's gone. And you can option click to select all following. So if I hold down option and single click, I'm going to select all following nodes from where I clicked on. And if I, there we go. And if I option double click, I'll select all automation nodes in that lane. So option double click is a good way of selecting all. Now to edit them, you can click on a line or a node and change by an absolute value. So if I click right on this, let's say, yeah, this is selected here. I can move it all up or down in an absolute fashion. But if I click above or below it, I can do it in a relative fashion. So it scales it. And you get an info tag displaying information about the amount that you're offsetting it. But basically it's important to understand clicking on the line is absolute, clicking outside is relative. Some important modifiers to be aware of, if you click and then press the shift key, you can constrain the movement to be horizontal. So let me deselect and I'm gonna click and hold shift. And now I'm moving only horizontally and no matter how much I try, I can't move up and down. So it's good for not making mistakes. I find generally that when you're editing automation, you either need to move it in time or move the value of it, but generally not both at once. Similarly, if you click hold and then press control, you'll constrain movement horizontally. So it stays in place and you can move it up or down to different levels. And it'll also give you very fine resolution. So good for making subtle adjustments to your levels. Okay, for deleting automation, I can do it by selecting all and hitting the delete key. I'm gonna option double click and I'm gonna hit delete and it's gone. I can do the same thing there. And you can also get access to a bunch of commands for deleting under the track automation menu and the track menu. You can delete all different criteria of automation, visible automation, all automation, etc. And you can also move and copy from there. So it's useful to look through that menu. Now I wanna look at creating nodes another way. Let me go to this region over here, take this out of cycle mode and let's play this. I want to make Can You Believe It louder. So what I can do is hold down Option, Control, and Shift, and then rubber band select across, and it's going to create four nodes, two on each end, and I can click right on the line and drag it up, and it leaves handles on the side so that the values before and after are preserved. So I'm going to increase the send level like this. We'll get it nice and wet, and let's do the same thing here. Option, Control, Shift, Drag, and raise the level way up. Let's listen to that. Can you believe it? So I want that effect just for that phrase. Maybe I'll lower it a little bit. That's a nice way of creating additional handles. And you can also do the same thing with the marquee tool. This is very cool. Let me go back here. And I'm going to select as my alternate tool the marquee. I can just select an area like that, go back to the pointer tool, and it'll automatically do that for me. So it's a very cool shortcut. Okay, copying and moving automation. You can copy and paste automation. Let's say I'm going to create some nodes here. And I can just select it copy it and paste it. The other thing I can do is with it selected, I can option drag and move it like that. Let's select all this and delete it. And the other thing I can do is command click a destination parameter to copy it to in the menu here. So let's say I'm gonna create some automation again. And if I command click here and hold down, let's say send to, it's asking me if I want to convert or copy the automation data to that new destination. So if I go copy and convert, you'll see now it's at send two. And if I hit the disclosure triangle, we'll get the new send one automation data. And you'll see that it's been copied to that new parameter. A couple of other cool little automation tips. If you hold down the command key and drag this, you can scale the automation that way as well. And that's the relative type of scaling. 
And you can also do that by holding down the command key and dragging on the numerical display over here. So same thing. And finally, two cool little tips to leave you with. If you hold down the control and shift key, you can curve your automation line. You can drag it down to get those kinds of fades. And if you drag it left and right, you get S curves. So lots of nice ways to customize the automation that way. And last tip, in your snap mode, you can set automation to snap to the grid. So that's good if you want to automate some rhythmic automation. And last but not least, there are some automation preferences that you can set. When you're moving and copying regions, Logic can optionally never move the automation with it. Always move the automation with it or ask you to move the automation with it. And there's a snap offset for when you're snapping the automation to the grid. Ramp time is when you're in touch mode. It'll allow a user-definable amount of time for how long it takes for the fader to revert back to the previous setting that it was at. And there's some other various messages and settings that you can set here. So that's it for now. Stay tuned, and I'll see you for more next time.